Welcome back to In the Gap. These are great lessons about how God's people persevere, how God's people conquer, how God's people give hope in hopeless situations. In this session, I want to talk about David. We know David was anointed by God to do the work. David was born in a world where God's people were distressed and discouraged. You see, the Philistines and other enemies had been attacking their settlements. They were demoralized. They were broken. At times, they were very hopeless. As the Philistine army took possessions across the valley, the destiny of God's people was in jeopardy. Then God finds an unlikely candidate, a little boy, teenager, who would stand in the gap. David's parents didn't even see the greatness in him, and his brothers didn't see the spark of glory in their little sibling. The anointing prepared him for all his important roles. You see, throughout the Bible, we see God chooses to walk with the weak. He chooses to walk with the outcast and the powerless to accomplish his purpose. He chooses and selects people that maybe normally we wouldn't think that was capable of standing in the gap. David stands on a long line of people who at some point in their lives were unknown to men, but well known to God. As I teach this lesson tonight, I think about a lot of you, a lot of people in our church, that maybe you're not known out there, you're not known on social media, you don't have very many followers on Instagram and Facebook, and maybe you don't even know what social media is, but you are well known to God. You are very capable of standing in the gap. David later becomes Israel's most beloved king. When my wife and I and some church people visited Israel several years back, we went to the tomb of David. I would call it a casket. It's very solemn, very respectful, very quiet. People sitting in a, a room and up front was a tomb. And I went up there and I touched it, I put my hands on it. And I saw people from Jerusalem there that were kissing the tomb. Here's my point. He became Israel's most beloved king, but he started on the backside of a desert, tending sheep behind the scenes. David's shepherding lessons were all part of God's plan to prepare him for the stand in the gap moment, one of the most famous encounters of all time between good and evil. But those behind the scene times, let me just pause for a minute and tell someone that's listening to me today. Your behind the scene moments, not your highlight reels, but your behind the scene moments are preparing you and putting the pieces together for God to help you become famous in all the encounters that lie ahead of you. And we know now that that day, David, it was no ordinary day. David now had two thankless jobs that lied before him. He was shepherding his responsibilities. He also became an errand boy. He carried supplies to his brother. And David took stock in his opponent as he had in previous threats with the bear and the lion. Now, I want you to get this, okay? This is amazing to me. David kills a bear and a lion. Along with me, what would you do if you saw a bear and a lion in the wilderness? Hey, sometimes we catch on the news, the LA news, there's a bear or a mountain lion roaming through the streets, tearing in the garbage cans. Do you actually go out there and I'm gonna kill that bear, get away from my car, don't scratch my car? No, I'm validating you. I'm doing the same thing. I'm calling animal control, lock the doors, nobody go outside. Those beasts are ferocious and fast and powerful. But you see, that's not what David did. Early that morning, David had been a nobody. His father hadn't even considered him. And these bear and a lion approach his dad's sheep. Again, you and I, you know what? My dad has a lot of sheep. He don't really count. I'm in charge of the sheep. Oh, well, we lose one, but I'm not dying today. I think we would all say something like that, right? Dad, sorry, bummer. I got bad news. I lost three sheep, but hey, your son's still here, dad. That's not what David did. David was being prepared 
from one of the most famous showdowns in the history of the Old Testament. God had seen something in David's heart. He saw greatness where others saw nothing. After his anointing, the prophet Samuel comes, anoints him. David didn't even demand attention. And he didn't even walk to Saul's throne room and say, get out, it's my turn now. David kept, after, watch this, after the anointing, David kept tending sheep, serving his father and running errands to help his brothers. For a while, it didn't appear that God's anointing would make any difference at all in David's life. But that day in the gap between the two armies, David responded to a desperate situation with faith and strength. I think at the end of the day, at the end of the story, at the end of my lesson, we can all say David stood in the gap. And David's remembered for his great exploits. But again, I feel like I'm talking to someone that's watching this, that you're on the backside of the desert and you've overcome some obstacles. You overcame a bear, so to speak. You overcame a lion, so to speak, that could have destroyed you. And nobody saw you fight them. You have nobody to brag to. You have nobody to champion. Hey, look what I did. The Lord's anointing was upon me. Look what I did. Nobody to share. And you're just wondering, when is my day coming? Well, my friend, I'm here to tell you, God knows. And he believes in you. And he sees your heart. In the meantime, like David, you keep serving. You keep running errands. You keep being yourself available. And the anointing is upon you. And that day will come that God will bless you. And then you will know, hey, I'm anointed by God and I stood in the gap and I made a difference. And this feels right in my spirit. Hey, think about David's life. Thank you guys for listening. May God bless all of us this week, this month, as we stand in the gap.